Hello and welcome to Mishalad Astrology. My name is Shal and I'm a full-time working astrologer and on this channel I analyze the astrological charts of public figures and very often they are celebrities or their or their their sexual predators or their murderers or their politicians or their royals. <laughs> but most of the time I do like actors and singers and artists. That will be the case today as I'll be analyzing the astrological chart of a very reluctant celebrity but she's kind of an icon like she's like a millennial an icon for millennials and younger and that is the Ms. Lana, Lana Del Rey so I've had so many people request this reading over the year that I've had this YouTube channel people want to know who she is because she has so much mystique you know there's not a lot of celebrities these days who have that golden age of cinema mystique and that's what she taps into with her music her art um the aesthetics that she has for her albums she's she channels you know like literally her, her she her stage name is lana um you know like lana turner and she taps into marilyn a lot and jackie kennedy she wasn't a movie star but like that that mystique she taps into that old world that bygone era mystique that not a lot of people have and she's she's private she makes uh, you know and I love Taylor Swift but Taylor Swift gets overexposed um she is overexposed Lana isn't so there's always like demand for her people are hungry for pictures of her she's not even the greatest live performer I think she's a fantastic musician a fantastic songwriter she has a fantastic voice but her stage presence because she's so shy she's a very shy introverted person being on stage must be incredibly painful for her and I say this as a, uh, a Scorpio rising myself putting on a show and doing it competently not even well competently is exhausting and but the beauty of her is that when she shows up to a concert where a live performance which is usually a festival she doesn't have to be good on stage she doesn't have to She's kind of like our generation's Elvis, like a female Elvis. She can go up there, be sweaty and be messy and not really sing to pitch. Um, but people will cry and faint and scream and react. You know, she's just got that star quality and that charisma that not a lot of people have. She, it says a lot when a performer doesn't have to be good on stage in order to have the audience in the palm of their hand, to hold a court like that effort like without a lot of effort I'm sure actually I'm sure she puts a lot of effort into her live performances but she's not she's still not great at it but she's got that charisma so yeah like it's she's she's a very unique interesting person so I'm not surprised a lot of you um asked for this reading um I don't perceive her as that mysterious because I think it's because I share quite a few placements with her I'm a Scorpio rising I have a Taurus Venus I have a moon not in Leo but in a public house you know so there are some things that I share with her I understand her so she's not yeah that big a mystery to me but that might help me with this reading so let's um hold on wait I have to plug <clears throat> advertising coming to you from our sponsors me I do um I do readings, I do 15 minute MP3 readings, full chart, analysis, transits, sinistries for 15 minutes. It's a recording of my voice that's sent to your email. And then I also do five minute focus readings for a specific part of your chart or a specific thing in your life. If you want to like really like, yeah, dive deep into a specific topic of your chart, we can do that. I also have my YouTube members. It's another great way to support me financially to just keep this keep the wheels well oiled. Um, I post videos on there upon your request and I answer your questions on there. So if that's something you'd like to do, um, I'd be very, 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 very appreciative. And also in the members, you get discounts on readings. If, if you're a member of my channel, YouTube member, you'll get very significant discounts on readings and you'll be the first to find out. The members know. The members know what I'm talking about. Shh. <laughs> um <coughs> anyway um if you can't do any of that please like subscribe comment help me with the algorithm um please comment nicely because some of you guys some people are being a bit mean to each other please be kind okay cheers because i'll delete it anyway okay let's dive into uh lana del rey's chart shall we so she is a scorpio rising with saturn in the first house god she had to grow up quickly she was a precocious child she's got that venus 
with that north node over here with Pallas Athena, interesting, and Lilith, interesting. Sun at one degree, sorry, zero degrees in Cancer, a Mars in Cancer, Mercury in Cancer. She, of course, has the series, the asteroid, and then a moon in midheaven in Leo. It's giving mother, it's giving artiste, it's giving mystique, it is. And uh, yeah, those are all her all her personal placements. So look, what shall we focus on first? Let's go to this North Node with Venus. Here, okay, so I noticed with Lana's chart, she has a lot of submiss submissive placements, which is really interesting because she's such a force. You know, she's a Scorpio riding. You are Scorpio rising. You don't fuck with that energy. Um, I think she's incredibly beautiful and intimidating. There is like a quiet confidence about her, and certainly with a Leo midheaven, which is a masculine midheaven, it's very overpowering. It's very shiny, like the sun. But, but when you look at her other placements, they're very submissive. They're very soft with her art, with her work. She's very dominant and very controlling over her money, over her image. Definitely. That's that Leo moon up there with the Leo midheaven. But when it comes to her personal life, very submissive. And that I haven't, re I haven't listened to too much of her music. There are a few bangers that I enjoy. Like, fuck it. I love you. Love it. Uh, but she is looking for love. Her and Taylor Swift with that North Node with the Venus. Taylor's got hers in Aquarius. Her North Node and Venus are in Aquarius. Uh, so it's a different kind of love that she's after. Um, she's looking for stability. You know, she's she, when you have your North Node with Venus, your destiny is to find love. And that can be a very, very, very long journey. And it's also about learning to love yourself along the way and through that relationship. And having Venus play out in the seventh house, she's incredibly codependent. Um, she she has a lot of trouble seeing her value and her beauty for herself on her own. She's very needy of other people to reflect back an image of her. Very, very She needs a friend, a partner, to tell her that she's beautiful and that she's wonderful and that she's worthy. Because your seventh house is the thing that you're not. What happens when the planet of beauty and self-esteem and wealth and is in, is in the seventh house of others? You're going to require other people to give you that thing, right? So it's really hard having a personal placement in a seventh house because it is going to make you codependent. That's not me shitting on that placement. I have the same placement. I have this placement. It's not easy. Venus on the descendant, geez. Um, and it's a long, it's a long journey to find love. Um, what, what makes this a bit complicated is that she's got Lilith here. She's naturally codependent. She's every time she falls in love, she's hoping that this will be the one. Like this will be it, and I'll finally understand my own worth through this person. But Lilith is here and it's destructive and Lilith don't like to be married. Taurus Venus loves the idea of marriage and, you know, the, the big car and the white house with the picket fence and, you know, like, m you know, turning butter and shit. Like they love that. But you got to remember wherever Lilith lies is where you need to be free. Lilith doesn't like marriage and that's why I'm a bit wor worried about this marriage that she's just gotten into. I feel like there's a lot of, I've seen this in history. I'm going to do this in history chart. That's going to come out soon. But Lilith is self-destructive. And if you, if you read, you know, go back into the mythology, like what, what is wrong with Lilith? It's that she was oppressed in that marriage. And I'm wondering if with, with Lana being very submissive and very codependent and needy in a relationship, if if that's if that is gonna turn into something sour, if that's going to leave a bad taste in her mouth, if a loving relationship will eventually, you know, lead to having shackles around her wrists, that's what I'm a bit worried about here. Um, her, her, I think she's got her palace Athena, her creative and strategic genius. It's love is the muse. So she's looking for love and she's looking for stability. And she's also, you know, tr in need of a muse. So, yeah, um, it's not the healthiest. Because for her, when love goes wrong, that's when she produces her, her best songs. 
So, yeah, this is a very complex combination of energies here Um, because this is a very healthy kind of north node, I think, but it's just that Lilith is like, because I could argue that her destiny is to achieve her creative genius and she will and she has and she will continue to do that. But, I mean, when love goes wrong, that will still continue to happen. It's just, it's just sad. It's just really, really sad. Also, with her Venus in Taurus, she is naturally submissive in relationships and she's very attracted to money and power, specifically money when she was young, money and power when she was younger. I think now uh, with this choice of man being closer in age to her, which is, is healthier, but she was, guys, remember, she was messing around with Harvey Weinstein and that was probably one of the few consensual relationships that he that they that she that he's had but she was in love with harvey she wrote a song about him like harvey in the sky with diamonds something like that something something like that i haven't heard it heard it but i know that that she has dedicated a song to him and i think she had i think he like had her change the name of the song is that true lana fans put in the comments let me know what you think this is all this is all just what i've understood from the media that's out there i haven't actually listened to the song um but yeah that's that's Lana's Venus placement with Lilith, with the North Node, with Pallas Athena. Um, her moon up here. Let's talk about let's talk about the other feminine planet. And remember what I said in past past readings that when the moon and Venus are not cooperating, it's really difficult because they're the feminine planets. So when they're not in agreement or alignment with each other, what what your Venus is attracted to and what your Venus needs is not good for you emotionally and what your moon needs and what's good for you emotionally is not necessarily the thing that makes you attracted so it's difficult um her moon is in playing out in the 10th um for this I know it's in the ninth yes but because she's got a midheaven in Leo it plays out in the 10th um a mother to all uh she's a a true artist, Leo is an artistic sign. It's ruled by the sun. It's shiny. It tap dances. It sings. It paints a portrait. Like it, it's look at me, right? And her moon is in Leo. She, in in terms of her intimate world, because and I say this about all Leo moons, Leo moons need to be the center of their domestic world. They need to. <laughs> Be quiet, Leo Moon. You know that. You have to. I've known Leo Moons. They would never admit to this. But it's true. Leo Moons, in terms of their um, interpersonal relationships, their close, tight relationships, they need to be the center. And everybody revolves around them. I don't think they they mean to walk into a party and be like, now everyone bow. Like, I don't think they, right? But it's just, it's an energy. It's like they want to put on a show. They will do the tap dance in the living room in front of, you know, five people, that kind of thing. It doesn't necessarily have to be on a mass scale. Now, with her, what changes this up is that it plays out in a house of career. So when it comes to her career, she's very particular about her aesthetic, her look, colors, um, how she's framed, how she's lit, very controlling. Um, and, and hella sensitive. She's got that moon up there. So she, she feels the slings and the arrows. Like she isn't, she's in a lot of pain up there, but she loves making art. It's a very difficult placement. Um, and when, when she writes, when she writes those songs, she is putting herself center stage and she's framing the relationship for the whole world to see. Um, when you have your moon, your moon in the 10th house or moon at the top of the chart, you seek intimacy and you seek connection through your work or through, um, your, your associates, through your colleagues. Like you're looking for a connection in a public house. You're like, when you have your moon in the 10th or 11th, you are seeking family and intimacy in an unintimate space. And that is hella messy. So, um, yeah, <laughs> there we go. That's a, that's where she that's where she has um, a lot of power, a lot of control. It's the most masculine energy she has. Um, it squares off with Venus. So clearly, her being artistic and writing about her intimate life and um, being this big 
beautiful music star conflicts with her Venus things, with her relationships. So this will be a theme. Uh, so if you look at the Harvey Weinstein situation, he got upset with that. Because she told the whole world that they'd been hooking up and he's like, uh-uh, I'm married. What the fuck? So that's an example of how the moon and the Venus in her case don't get along. If she if she makes her art and exposes herself to the whole world, exposes her like her her intimate world to, in, on a on a public platform, that's going to destroy some relationships, friendships as well, not just like romantic relationships. So it's, uh, it's, she has to learn boundaries here. So yeah, it's a difficult, um, square, the moon being so public, but the Venus, you know, have the Venus having to take account of other people. The moon, the moon in the 10th doesn't take into account other people. It's about self-expression. And here she has to learn to negotiate her north node is here. She has to learn how to be in partnership with others. And if she's got to learn how, how to be in partnership with others, she may have to compromise her art. You see why this is hard? Mm. I wonder if she has ruined relationships by writing songs about people. Mm. We'll never know because she's quiet about that stuff. Okay, let's talk about all this cancer. Cancer sun, cancer Mars, cancer Mercury. So very emotional. It all plays. It's in the eighth. Yes. Which is the Scorpio house. But because it's in Cancer, it plays into the ninth. So um, she's a Cancer, stellium, but she's also a bit of a Sagittarius. She's always looking to expand herself intellectually, spirit spiritually, emotionally, because it's Cancer. She's always looking to feel another feeling, which is also incredibly painful for her. It gets her into a, into a lot of trouble. Uh, a Mercury playing out in the ninth as well. She's a natural teacher. Um, she would be good. I know she's got a book. She wanted, to, I think she got a, she had a book of poetry. Didn't she write a book of poetry that got stolen? Her laptop got, got stolen. I see her being a poet, which she is. She's, a, she's a singer. Her poems are in the form of songs, but she would make a really good, like, um, writer, like writing a book or a book of poems or something like that. So maybe she's going to expand a little bit, um, change, um, just yeah change her art making potentially like the way she makes art might may change and develop over time I think she'll always sing but it would be really cool to see her write a book or even illustrate or something like that I don't know how good she is at drawing um but she's got an eye for color she's got an eye for, for beauty um even though the ninth house is a masculine house it's a Sagittarius house she has a lot of feminine that feminine cancer stellium playing out in there um she she is a bit of a vagabond as well. I think she does enjoy traveling. I don't think she's loud about it, but she loves wandering around America and you know getting behind. <laughs> what did she do? She got she got she she got behind the bar or something. She started serving drinks or she, she was waitress for a day. Like that's a very vagabond ninth house thing to do. It was like playing dress up for her. I think she just wanted to pose as a normal person for a day. So. It's really interesting. Um, let's have a look. Oh, there's so many. She's got so much red in her chart, a lot of pain. What is this? This precocious child doing grown up things at a young age. So, um, Saturn, the planet of karma and the father and restrictions and daddy, daddy things is at 22 degrees at 22 minutes. Kill or be killed degree. Extreme situations with father figures I don't know I does anyone know about her father I have no idea but she clearly has daddy issues why does she have daddy issues if her dad is a good man did she, did something happen in her formative years with another father figure like an uncle or like did something happen she just saw stuff she has a lot of early trauma was she abused I because Saturn in the in the first house is someone that had to grow up quite young you know, um, as Taylor Swift said, sometimes, you know, when someone grows up precocious, it means they never grow up at all. That's in a song. That's true for her. She grew up really, really fast. Um, Scorpio Risings also have very difficult lives. It's just, the, that's, that's just the, that's, those are the cards we're fucking dealt. And then also to have Pluto here and Saturn doing a dance together here. I know they're like not in a conjunction, but um, they are occupying the same sign. There was, there has to be some kind of abuse 
from a male figure because she's got those daddy issues. Did she run away when she was young? Did she get to, she got into a lot of trouble when she was young? She's got a lot of expectations on her and she's expected to follow the rules and she just doesn't. Like, mm, Pluto square the moon. Why doesn't she feel safe at home? She's got Jupiter down here and Jupiter in the same sign as the IC could indicate a very wealthy home or a very loving home. But it's retrograde and it's in an unstable sign. So the home is still chaotic. Even if she's got a lot of love and a lot of money, there's something else. Were her parents divorced? Did she have to move a lot when she was a kid? Like, what's going on here? Because her moon's up here. Why does she feel the safest and the most vulnerable, exposing her heart and soul to the public, to millions of people? How come she feels at home up here in this unintimate place? Which also gets her into a lot of trouble. Why does she feel more comfortable being intimate with a crowd than her own family? What's going on? What dysfunction is there? I don't know. I don't know, but the, it's there. But the Jupiter isn't indicating that she grew up with, like, well, maybe a lot of wealth or a lot of love, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there's, like, no dysfunction, you know what I mean? Um, and that Saturn squares Jupiter. Oh, and they're both retrograde, so both husband things and daddy things. Disappointing father and a disappointing husband or husband's. Disappointing father figures, disappointing elders, and disappointing husbands, like boyfriends. <laughs> anyway, someone help me out in the comments. Whatever aligns with what you know. Um, second house, Uranus, part of fortune, and Neptune is in Capricorn. But um, money is up and down. Money is very up and down. I think at one point she might have had no money or not a lot of money. Um and it comes in like it comes in like very sudden waves like she'll get make a lot of money one moment and then she'll have none for a while or she won't make anything for a while she's part of fortune here so i feel like she's always going to have money but the money is very it, go, it goes up and down hopefully she has a financial manager her uranus is pretty well aspected with jupiter so maybe she gets support or she had support from her family very early on uranus trying the moon ah makes money from her art and it happens in waves. That makes sense. Even though Uranus is an unstable planet to have in your second house, if it's nicely aspected with another planet, like a personal planet, then money's always going to come to you. You're, you're going to be fine. And it's in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the um, sign of abundance. So yeah, her second house. Um, Scorpio risings generally do quite well with money. Even when they're broke, they'll find another way to make it just because – Sagittarius is ever expanding on their second house and Uranus is like new and inventive and creative ways to make money as well and it's nicely aspected her moon she has she's a pure this is an artist chart 1000% an artist chart very very creative um addictions to drugs Pluto in the 12th that makes a lot of sense but the Pluto is really nicely aspected so drugs themselves may be a muse for her I've heard her sing about you know, smoking and drinking and things like that. Uh, but it does hurt her body. Pluto squares the moon. It will hurt her body. Like her vices will get the better of her uh, if she is not careful. It helps with creativity. It helps with expanding her, you know, her creative process and expanding her mind and her heart, blah, blah, blah. But it destroys her body. It hurts her a lot. So hopefully she's coming out of that. Um, poor little moon. She has a lot of emotional problems because her moon has one nice aspect with Uranus and it's in a money house. So expressing her feelings is going to get her a lot of wealth and it's going to help stabilize her. But at the same time, there's more nice aspect. There's more hard aspects, difficult aspects to her moon than, the than there is positive, easy aspects. That's how I should be. I, like, I don't like the word bad because a, a square can be genius. You know, like that moon square Pluto, that moon square Venus, they're genius placements. When you see a chart and there's not a lot of red, I'm like, mm, that person's might be that person might be a little bit, a little might have life a little bit easy <laughs> or it might be a little bit boring. <laughs> but anyway, if you got a lot of red, you're in a lot of pain. She, she almost has a T-square. Thank goodness she doesn't. She has enough of a hard time. 
And I'm just I'm just looking at that Neptune opposite opposite her son. Yeah, Neptune, yeah, Neptune opposite her son, what the delusion. She's a dreamer. She she a little bit delusional, but I feel like she has enough self awareness that she knows when she's being delusional. Is she being delusional about this new husband? I think she's just in love. Anyway. She's not that big a mystery to me, but we do love her. I think she's got some really sweet placements. She's got some nice placements. It's, it's, uh, she's got fire, she's got water, she's got earth, and no air. No ability to, like, when you have no, it's not the, that's not the worst element to leave out in a chart, but if you've got no air in your chart, it's like there's a lack of reasoning. It's just all feeling. It's all senses. It's all pleasure and senses and love and it's not thought Ugh, like uh, you know reality check none <laughs> anyway that is my reading for Lana Del Rey I hope you enjoyed that um any Lana Del Rey people here? what do you call Lana Del Rey's fans we've got Taylor Swifties and we've got we've got the barbs right for Nicki Minaj what do you what do the Lana Del Rey people what are the Lana Del Rey Lana Del Rey girls and gays call themselves I'm just wondering put it please put in the comments anyway thank you so much I will have um Lana and Jeremy sinistry sinistry chart coming I'll be on that as soon as possible okay thank you guys bye